Carnegie Dam. And actually, when I say long standing, he's been the temple president in our community for 21 years. So um, we had several brief temple presidents along the way, but he has stayed the course and we are blessed to have him here um, in our community serving our beautiful deity, Shishi Radha Kalachanji, who he's so devoted to, as well as our beloved spiritual master, Tamal Krishna Maharaj, who uh, this entire three-day seminar is to glorify him, his life and his mission, his memories. So um, I would just like to say about Nityananda, he has performed so many amazing and beautiful yagyas here in this community to purify us all, as well as he gives uh, very illuminating Bhagavatam classes often. And uh, I must say his laugh is contagious. <laughs> He's a very glorious devotee and we're blessed to have him. And it is, um, it's an honor to introduce him to you all. His Grace Nityananda Prabhu. Thank you so very much. Om Gyan Timirandhasya Gyan Janushalaka Chakshuram Nitham Yena Tasme Shri Guru Yenama Namam Vishnu Padame Krishna Pishthai Buddha Shimate Tamal Krishna Goswam Nitinam Namam Vishnu Padame Krishna Pishthai Buddha Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swam Nitinam Namaste Saraswati Devi Gora Varni Pacharini Nevishesh Shunivadi Paschaka Deshatai. Mancha kalpa, Kuruvischa, Kripas, and Tubia Evacha, Patitanam, Pavanipya, Vaishnavipya, Namonama. Hare Krishna. So, thank you very much, everyone, for joining this wonderful program. Uh, as it says on the left top hand corner of this Zoom program, this program is being recorded so that those of us who could not, who cannot join from time to time or may not be able to join uh, any part of the program will be able to view this. And so it is important uh, that, um, that the program is conducted in a way that others will benefit from this very nicely. Mm -hmm. And right at the outset, uh, because of the introduction that uh, um, Mother Nandini just gave me so very kindly, speaking uh, beyond my qualities, I wanted to add that one of the temple presidents on the way who actually did stay the course was Yudhisthira Prabhu. Uh, he also stayed the course. and. Uh, of course, at some point, moved on for whatever he had to do, and uh, um, I had to do what I had to do. Um, so I wanted to start by saying welcome to everyone. Um, thank you so very much for joining us. These are going to be three amazing days of uh, speaking about uh, His Holiness, Srila Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj, who we very, very lovingly call Srila Gurudev. So Srila Gurudev had two overarching uh, uh, moods that I think right at the outset, it's very important for us to know. And that is that for him, the two most important things were that each person on this planet should have an opportunity to advance uh, in their consciousness to the point of becoming Krishna conscious and then coming to know Krishna and his associates, Lord Goranga and his associates intimately. This was very, very important to Srila Gurudev. And the second thing that was equally important, and sometimes we would think even more important for very good reasons, was that he wanted each and every one of us to introduce Krishna to others so that they can become Krishna conscious because Krishna is the greatest. If one has Krishna, one has everything, one has everyone, one has every circumstance, every place, every time, all of these are contained inside of Krishna. And we as living entities, as you know, are variegated. So we all have our personal desires and our personal genders and everything else. And Krishna is the one who allows us to fulfill them in a way that's way beyond our most uh, ecstatic dreams. And the Western term would be the, our wildest dreams. Uh, but the Krishna conscious term is the most ecstatic dreams like that. They're also wild from time to time. So how, how did he actually ask us to do these two things? Particularly, he gave us four instructions that are very important. The first is that one should always be very compassionate to other living entities. We should understand that all living entities are struggling and suffering. And so reaching out to them is most important. And as you know, Srila Prabhupada asked us to preach. And this is what the preaching program is about. 
how to extend the compassion of Radharani, who is the compassionate nature of Krishna, to everyone like that. And of course, Gauranga Mahaprabhu himself showed us the way of compassion. The second is to be always very tolerant, because in this world, there are going to be many, many challenges. And oftentimes, we will be insulted. Uh, there will be many challenges from the point of view of, uh, of our uh, physical self, our mental self, our psychological self, like that. So there's so many challenges on the way. And so if we're tolerant, it tells Krishna that we love him so much, just like the mother who has a newly born baby, how much she has to tolerate in bringing up that baby. And so, but she has no difficulty. She doesn't even flinch for a moment because she's so much in love with the baby that no matter what difficulty she has to go through, she, she happily bears it and shows no sign that she has become resentful of whatever the circumstances or person, uh, time, place that she might have to encounter like that. The third instruction he gave us is that we should always chant attentively. He wanted us to chant quality realms and he wanted us to also chant in a way that was most attentive. And of course, attentiveness is part of the quality, um, but one aspect of it is also the quantity. And this is sometimes hard to understand how the quantity is quality, but Prabhupada did describe that when asked why chant 16 rounds, he said one should chant 16,000 rounds a day, because the more rounds you chant, the more we're going to become attracted to Krishna, because the holy name is not different from Krishna. And finally, the fourth instruction that he gave was that we should always read scrutinizingly. The Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, all of the books of Srila Prabhupada, all of the wonderful writings of the wonderful Acharyas, uh, and of course the followers of Srila Prabhupada were writing so many wonderful books, uh, like Giraj Maharaj, who will be speaking soon as well. Uh, we should read these books scrutinizingly. So what does it mean to read scrutinizingly? It means that we should understand what is being said, we should be able to apply it in our lives, and most importantly, we should be able to explain it to others so that they can also understand it and apply it in their lives and pass it on, explain it to others like that. So learn, apply, and then teach, which is perfection. The teacher is the best student. And for this purpose, Shri Gurudev often spoke to many of us and said that we should write, that we should write books because when you write, or at least do some writing, you don't have to write a book, but at least do some writing because when you write and you publish what you're writing, you're going to be careful of what you say in those in, in your words because you want to be sure that no one uh, feels that you have not understood the topic that you're talking about the subject matter you're talking about so now reading becomes more scrutinizing when we understand that we have to actually pass this on to others so uh, um, i wanted to stay stop there because you know i wanted to keep to my five minutes that was allotted for welcoming so again welcome everybody these were some opening words um, to actually express the mood of, uh, of Srila Gurudev. There are many, many things to be said about him. Uh, but we'll uh, move on to the next part of this program, which is the sacrifice part, the Jyagya part of the program. And so what happened was that the person who was going to perform a actual fire Jyagya uh, became incapable of, doing, incapable of doing it because of some uh, uh, circumstances beyond his control in the family. Someone in the family passed away and he had to attend to that. And so I was, I was asked to do that. Now there's something very wonderful about fire sacrifices. Fire sacrifices are mentioned throughout the Shemad Bhagavatam, many parts of the scripture. In fact, at one point it is described that the kindling stick, the stick with which you burn the other pieces of wood is, is a guru and the pieces of the wood that you're putting, uh, setting fire to other disciples. And when the fire starts, that is transcendental knowledge. And that transcendental knowledge, transcendental knowledge will illuminate everyone and allow everyone to come to know Krishna and become truly happy in their life, truly, truly ecstatic in their lives like that. So uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur described that this Kisashtaka, the Sikshashtaka, so the eight prayers that uh, Lord Chaitanya wrote, uh, actually described the seven flames, the seven flames of the fire of Krishna consciousness, the jagya of Krishna consciousness, Sankirtan jagya. And, and I'm just going to read the English translation, then we can all chant together the Srimad, uh, the Sri uh, Sikshastakam. And then after that, we will um, uh, read the translations for those of us who may not be very familiar 
with what the translation of each verse is. But the seven flames are described as, let there be all victory for the chanting of the holy name of Lord Krishna, which can, and here come the seven flames. Number one, cleanse the mirror of the heart. Number two, stop the miseries of the blazing fire of material existence. Number three, that chanting is the waxing moon that spreads the white lotus of good fortune for all living entities. Number four, it is the life and soul of all education. Number five, the chanting of the holy name of Krishna expands the blissful ocean of transcendental life. Number six, it gives a cooling effect to everyone. And number seven, it enables one to fully taste the nectar at every step. Because we all want to be happy, we all want to be ecstatic at every step, and these are the seven flames that allow us to have it. So if you have the verses in front of you, if you know the verses by heart, let's all chant together. Yeah, Sri Sikshastikam Ki Jai Chaito Darpanam Arjanam Bhava Mahadavadni Nirvapanam Shri Kirva Chandrika Vitaranam Vidyavadu Jeevanam Anandam buddhi vardhanam, pratipadam purnamrita svadhanam, sarvatma snapanam, param bhujete shri krishna sankirtanam, nam nam kari bahuda, nija sarva shaktis, praprakta nirmati smarane nakalana, itadrishi tava kripa bhagavan mamapi, durdeva midrisham hajani nanuragaha, Shri <laughs> Nayanam galadashudharaya, vadanam gadgadaradaya gira, pulake nichitam bapukada, tavanam gahane pavishyati, yugaitam nimishena, chakshusha pravashaitam, shunyaitam jagat sarvam, govinda virahaneme, asnisha vapartam pinashtamam, adarshanan marmatam karutuva, yathatha vavidadatu lampato, and then there's a verse that is chanted for the blessing. The translation is, if anyone recites or hears these eight verses of instruction by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his or her ecstatic love and devotion for Krishna increases day by day. So now we'll read the translation for each of the uh, of each of these verses. The first verse says, "Glory to the Sri Krishna Sankirtan, which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years and extinguishes the fire of conditional life, of repeated birth and death. This Sankirtan movement is the prime benediction for humanity at large because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon. It is the life of all transcendental." knowledge. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss and it enables us to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious. Oh my Lord, your holy name alone can render all benediction to living beings and thus you have hundreds and millions of names like Krishna and Govinda. In these transcendental names you have invested all your transcendental energies. There are not even hard and fast rules for chanting these names. O oh my Lord, out of kindness, you enable us to easily approach you by your holy names. But I am so unfortunate that I have no attraction for them. One should chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind, thinking oneself lower than the straw in the street. One should be more tolerant than a tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige, and should be ready to offer all respect to others. In such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. O oh, Almighty Lord, I have no desire to accumulate wealth, nor do I desire beautiful women. 
nor do I want any number of followers. I only want your causeless devotional service, birth after birth. O son of Maharaj Nanda Krishna, I am your eternal servitor, yet somehow or other I have fallen into the ocean of birth and death. Please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me as one of the atoms at your lotus feet. O my Lord, when will my eyes be decorated with tears of love flowing constantly when I chant your holy name? When will my voice choke up and when will the hairs of my body stand on end at the recitation of your name? O Govinda, feeling your separation, I am considering a moment to be like 12 years or more. Tears are flowing from my eyes like torrents of rain, and I am feeling all vacant in the world in your absence. I know no one but Krishna is my Lord, and he shall remain so, even if he handles me roughly by his embrace or makes me brokenhearted by not being present before me. He is completely free to do anything and everything, for he is always my worshipful Lord, unconditionally. Sri Sikshashtakam Ki Jai. So again, thank you very much, everybody, for attending this program. Welcome to everybody. And now I'll uh, pass the uh, baton back to uh, Mother Nandini Prabhu, so she can continue this program. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. You have to unmute. Thank you, Nanda Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Prabhu. So now um, we will expect Gary, His Holiness Giri Raj Swami to be joining us momentarily. And after uh, His Holiness Giri Raj Maharaj speaks, we'll be opening up to questions. So I've posted that. So anyone that has any questions or wants to participate or say a prayer or an offering, you just ping and I will um, I will repeat your question, put you on. Thank you so much. Mother Nandini, can you tell us what the program is today? What is the schedule for today? So we will be, after you're speaking, um, His Grace, His Holiness Giriraj Swami will be speaking and then we will have a question and answer. After which Sham Prabhu uh, from, from uh, England, and I, I understand he was at the um, Vrindavan Gurukula as well and has traveled the world doing yagas. Unfortunately, he can't be with us today. There was a, a death in the family. And so um, you've been his proxy <laughs> and it's been a blessing to have you here. After that, there will be a, um, a, a beautiful woman. Her name is Nirmala and she is going to be chanting a kirtan. She is... Um, a disciple of Shivaram Swami. So, and then um, at, that will be at the end. Between that, um, after His Holiness Giri Rajmar speaks, we'll have a question and answer. And this uh, entire program glorifying the life and memories of our spiritual master and um, who is dear to so many all over the world will be um, glorifying his life and memories that will be shared. And I know there are devotees uh, that have already uh, text me and, you know, we'll, we should be getting wonderful participation from people all over the world, Nitya Nanda Prabhu. And this program is going to be continuing for three days. So this is the day one. Tomorrow is day two, the 17th and the 18th Sunday will be the final day of glorification for him. Um, we could we could glorify our spiritual master 365 days of the year year and um, never ending, but this is a, a beautiful tribute to him. And I feel very blessed and honored to be able to be hosting this first day. Thank you. Thank very you. wonderful. Thank you. And, Maharaj, uh, I don't know if Guru Maharaj probably is still online if he's hearing us, but he was saying that he was going to have Guru Dev speak for a little while also. I was wondering when that was going to happen. That's well, me. when I spoke, yes, I just spoke with him a little while ago, and he, they were thinking to have a little lecture or something from uh, our spiritual master, Srila Gurudev, but he felt maybe time was tight with okay. Um, okay. This, this, uh, this dear devotee who is going to be chanting Kirtan at the uh, end. So he felt it would be a little, a little tight. Yeah. And... Um, 
you know, we were speaking a little earlier about how wonderful this Kalachanji Dam is and, and um, the beautiful Samani of our, the Pushpa Samani of our spiritual master that highlights our Kalachanji Park. And I was mentioning how glorious it is that every Friday when I'm doing my service in the temple to look out the window and see all the Gurukula children from TKG's Academy that are doing such beautiful, um, you know, beautiful that they have their juggernaut deities they do artique they chant and sing and dance and after my service i go out in the park and the parents are there it's very glorious and i know our spiritual master smiles seeing this yes yes yeah. they're the true gems of our of our uh community here they're the actual oh. the, the crowning jewels of our community here we all love them so much they're so bright eyed and they look so beautiful and their movements are so graceful. It's just amazing, you know. Uh, yeah. This generation uh, that we're seeing now uh, is a, a true representation of what the future of Krishna consciousness is going to be in this world, you know. Like that. Yes, it's a very, very, nice. very enlivening. It absolutely is. It's an, it is the future. This is these are the devotee futures. I mean, these children are they have their Shastra classes, they can quote so many verses, even the little ones. It's very inspiring, Nityananda Prabhu. It's so wonderful. Okay, thank you so much, Nandini Mataji and Nityananda Prabhu. We have the great pleasure of having Giriraj Swam Maharaj. So could I humbly request Nandini Mataji to please introduce Giriraj Swam Maharaj now. Yes, Hare Krishna. First, I would like to say Namam Vishnu Badaya Krishna Shai Bhutale Shimate Namal Krishna Goswamini Namam Vishnunaya Krishna Shai Bhutale Shimate Giriraj Swami Niki Namane Namam Vishnunaya Krishna Shai Bhutale Bhakti Vidanta Swami Niki Damane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gaudavani Pacharane Nevishe Shunivani Pashatate Shatane. It is my greatest heartfelt honor to be introducing His Holiness Giriraj Swami. And we could speak volumes about his glories and the service he's rendered to Srila Prabhupada since the very beginning of his career in Krishna consciousness. So just a brief background, um, His Holiness Giri Raj Swami was born in Chicago in 1947. And uh, we know what a renowned spiritual leader he is and spiritual initiating guru in ISKCON. And the tribute to that is his recent Vyasa Puja which spanned a month and devotees from all over the world, from India, from Mauritius, from Pakistan, from the UK, from Israel, Australia, New Zealand, Hawaii, and the US with accolades of uh, just heart rendering and beautiful offerings uh, to, to His Holiness, um, Giri Raj Swami. So basically a few, just touching on the highlights of the service that he's rendered through his life. Um, he founded both the Bhaktivedanta Hospice and the Institute of Palliative Care, as well as the um, Kirtan Ashram for Women. All of these are in Vrindavan, India. And um, while studying, just background, while studying at Brandeis University, he met Srila Prabhupada and felt that that meeting was more profound and impacted him more than all of his years at Brandeis. And upon graduating cum laude, he took initiation from Srila Prabhupada. And um, after Srila Prabhupada's departure from this world in 97, 1997, he accepted uh, the renounced order of sannyas. And we know the austerities and loyalty and dedication he's had to Srila Prabhupada and his care for the devotees all over the world is unparalleled. And we have experienced that in Kalachanji Dam, how from the very beginning he came after our spiritual master Tamal Krishna Maharaj departed and has been an, just an amazing and uh, compassionate, loving and strong support in our community. And we are, ever grateful. I am personally ever grateful for the encouragement uh, he's given me uh, along the way. So um, presently he is living in, his ashram is in uh, Carpinteria in California and he has 
follow the instruction uh, to write, one of one of the many instructions Srila Prabhupada gave him to write. And so following that instruction, he's authored many books and uh, Watering the Seed, just to mention, Many Moons, Life's Final Exam, Death and Dying in the Vedic Perspective. And most recently, um, uh, his just monumental efforts in um, Bombay and Mumbai, I'll Build a Temple, and that's the Juhu story, and that's to be published by the BBT. I'm not sure if that's available quite yet, Maharaj. You can you can tell us about that. And I know he's working on other books um, in, in the future. So I am very, very grateful to introduce to you all uh, His Holiness Giri Rush Swami. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> well, thank you for that introduction. Um, one thing uh, I thought to add when you mentioned my taking sannyas, that um, that I accepted some sannyas from His Holiness to Mount Krishna Goswami Maharaj, yeah. which I was very glad to do because I felt it, um, you know, cemented our relationship and added another uh, dimension to it. And uh, the 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 book. I'll Build You a Temple, The Jew Story, is at the printers. Right. And uh, it, it, as you mentioned, it's being published by the BBT under um, His Holiness Devamrita Swami Maharaj. Mm -hmm. And Maharaj said that it will take about two months to print. Okay. So, probably in two or at most three months, the book should be available. Oh. And there's a lot, obviously, about yeah. Tamal Krishna Goswami in it and uh, yeah. our service to Srila Prabhupada together. Come here. Come here. Oh, wow. Who is that? So I um, would. I have two suggestions for you. When I was sitting on my sofa and you made me come up, it's your fault. Who are you crying for? <laughs> Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. <laughs> so I would request everyone to turn on their videos, cameras, so I can I can see you. It's more personal. And yeah. And I was going to say you can mute yourself, but I think someone did that for you. But yeah. All right. Well, wow. Nice. Nice to see so many wonderful devotees uh, who are attached to Shiva Guru Day. Mm -hmm. To what did he, was it him, Maharaj, that said uh, two bodies, one soul? Yeah. Yes, and I, I was meditating on that, Maharaj, and I was thinking one soul totally dedicated to serving Srila Prabhupada, and yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so, um, yeah, I, I'll begin by saying the Mangala Charna prayers, reading a short kirtan, and then I will speak. Shri 
Shri Rupa Sagrita Shiva Sadi 
Thank you. 
Pad Paramhansa Pari Praja Kacharya Stotra Sutta Sri Simad Bhakti Vidanta Sami Prabhupad Ki Jai. Yes, Khan founder Acharya Srila Prabhupad Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramhansa Pari Praja Kacharya Stotra Sutta Sri Simad Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Go Sami Prabhupad Ki Jai. Anantakoti Vaishnavrindi Ki Jai. Namacharya Shilari Das Thakur Ki Jai. Prem Seko Ho Si Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivas Adi Gaur Bhakta Rinda Ki Jai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shamakunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai. Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. Navadweep Dham Ki Jai. Jamuna Mai Ki Jai. Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Tulsi Devi Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Samveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. Nitai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo. All glory is to the assembled devotees. All glory is to the assembled devotees. All glory is to the assembled devotees. All glory is all glory is to Sri Guru and Sri Guranga. Glories to Srila Prabhupada and Srila Gurudev. Hare Krishna. So, <laughs> there's so much to say about Srila Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. Um, Srila Prabhupada said that when a Vaishnava departs, we feel simultaneously happy and sad. We feel happy because we know the Vaishnava has gone to Krishna, but we feel sad because we miss the Vaishnava's association. I have no doubt that uh, Srila Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj has gone the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada and Sri Sri Radha Kalachanji uh, by such service as he offered to Srila Prabhupada for so many years, uh, he is naturally engaged in their service. Uh, one time when I came to Dallas, I had a very uh, significant talk with him in his bedroom, uh, sitting on the carpet on the floor. And he told me that, uh, you know, people thought that he was such a senior devotee he had been practicing Krishna consciousness for so many years. He was a direct disciple of Srila Prabhupada and had uh, three initiations from Srila Prabhupada, first initiation, second initiation, and sannyasa initiation. And uh, he had so much of uh, Srila Prabhupada's association. But what he told me, which was very which was very significant and had a very strong impact on me, was that in spite of his Parinam Gayatri and Sannyas initiations from Prabhupada and his association with Prabhupada and his practice of Krishna consciousness. 
he still felt he needed guidance from other devotees. He said that he took their guidance and he considered some of these guides whose names he listed to be his shiksha gurus. And he named, uh, and anyway, that's sort of a detail. So um, during that period, uh, I had been refused a visa to enter India, where I had served for many years, the first several with Goswami Maharaj. And when I was unable to return to India, I based myself in Mauritius and then gradually divided most of my time between Mauritius and South Africa. So I was pretty isolated from my God brothers. And historically at that time in the movement, some of the biggest leaders had fallen down. And I was in such a state of shock that I resolved within my heart <laughs> that I would never take shelter of anyone else except Srila Prabhupada again. So when Goswami Maharaj spoke to me as he did, I had to consider what he said. I always took what he said very seriously, but at the same time, I had vowed never again to place my faith in anyone except Srila Prabhupada. The next morning while we were chanting our rounds in the temple, the feeling or uh, realization came in my heart that actually what Goswami Maharaj had said was true. We do need guidance. We do need a shiksha guru or shiksha gurus. And it became equally clear that one person who should be my shiksha guru or who was meant to be my shiksha guru was Goswami Maharaj himself. It was such a clear realization such a strong realization that I became very excited and approached him. Now in those days, the, uh, the Japa period in the Dallas temple was very surcharged. I mean, Goswami Maharaj spent the whole time chanting his Japa there and the, the temple room was full. So it was really surcharged and um, as I, as I recall at that moment, he was sort of walking, walking in a circular motion around the temple. I was, and so I didn't want to disturb him, but this realization was just um, overwhelming uh, my heart. So uh, although ordinarily I wouldn't have disturbed him while he was chanting his rounds, I couldn't help myself. I told him that I just had the realization that what he had said was true, that despite all our association with Srila Prabhupada, we still need the guidance of other devotees. And he nodded his head knowingly, as he does, <laughs> or did, <laughs> does, <laughs> in agreement and approval. Finally, I had realized what he already knew. Then I said, and I've also been inspired with the conclusion that you should be my Shiksha Guru. I don't remember if physically I actually did it, but my mood was to throw myself at his lotus feet and beg him to be my Shiksha Guru. Again, I don't remember exactly what he said, but in effect, he agreed. So I was very happy. Um, I'm going to tell this other thing too. I think it's instructive. Uh, uh, it it um, it sort of explains. Uh, 
my mood in accepting uh, Goswami Maharaj as uh, Shiksha Guru. So some years earlier during Srila Prabhupada's presence, uh, I had been feeling especially wretched and miserable. And Srila Prabhupada just, uh, had discussed one verse on a morning walk on Juhu Beach. Uh, it comes originally from Stotra Ratna by Yamunacharya, but Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami addressed it to Lord Chaitanya when they met him for the first time. So the verse is Bhavantam Evanu Charam Nirantara Prashanta Nishesha Mano Ratantara Kadaham Aikantika Nitya Kinkara Praharshayisyami Sanatha Jivita. By serving you constantly, one is freed from all material desires and is completely pacified. When shall I engage as your permanent eternal servant and always feel joyful to have such a perfect master? So Srila Prabhupada elaborated on the word sanatha. Natha means master and sa means with. He had said that the goal of life is to become sanatha with master, not anatha, without master or orphan. Anatha is, is a, a, a word that means orphan. Then he had pointed to the jo dogs on Juhu Beach. The dogs with master, uh, he, he, and he pointed to one with his cane, <laughs> uh, uh, which was really stout and strong, just like its master, uh, were confident that I have my master. I have a home, a place to go at night. I will have food. If there's any difficulty, my master will protect me and take care of me. That's how Srila Prabhupada uh, described the mentality of the dogs with masters. And then he pointed to some stray dogs um, and they were um, skinny and scraggly and he had said that without masters, they were anatha. Other dogs would bark at them and children would throw stones at them. They didn't know where they would sleep or how they would get food. They were always in anxiety. So our goal of life is to become sanatha with master protected. So sometimes even having been initiated by Srila Prabhupada and having had so much association with him, I felt anatta, like an orphan, especially after some of the leaders whom I had respected so much left. I don't feel that way now, but th that's how I felt then. And then I made my resolution. You know, I'm never gonna put my faith in anyone except Srila Prabhupada. But after I approached Goswami Maharaj and he accepted me, I felt I was again Sanata. Sanata Jivita, I felt I had my living master. Uh, not that he took the place of Srila Prabhupada, but he helped me in my relationship with Srila Prabhupada, in my service to Srila Prabhupada. He helped me to approach Srila Prabhupada. And that was true then, and it uh, means, uh, <laughs> after I accepted him as my Shiksha Guru in Dallas. And it was true even during Srila Prabhupada's time. Um, as the years passed, I saw Goswami Maharaj in different situations. There was a time when he was staying in an apartment in the lower part of New York, 
writing one of his dramas. He had entered a new field of service. He was studying Sanskrit drama and writing plays. At the same time, <laughs> he had even been reading some Western dramas and he wasn't sure if what he was doing was correct. So he consulted his God brothers. And after that, I noticed that whenever he had an important decision to make, he would always consult his God brothers. And not only God brothers, I remember once in Houston when he was um, considering what to do about his health. He was consulting us, God brothers, but I, I remember Yudhisthira Prabhu was also there in, in that discussion. Um, but whenever he had to make an important decision, he would always consult his God brothers. He had special friends whom he consulted on specific points, but when he had to make a major or difficult decision, he would consult many God brothers. He might consult them individually, but when he had the chance, he would have them all come together and he would present his thoughts and doubts to them the different points in favor of and the different points against the idea. And basically he would accept their conclusion. Srila Prabhupada also said that when, when the Vaishnavas, the right devotees in the right atmosphere, consider and all agree, we should take their conclusion as Krishna's. So in any case, Goswami Maharaj always consulted his God brothers. He had faith in their association and he loved their association. And for important decisions, he had faith in the conclusions that would arise from their association. He was a very honest person. He spoke according to his realization and he acted as he spoke. Uh, Goswami Maharaj was an extraordinary person. His insight, his intelligence, and his association with Srila Prabhupada made him uniquely qualified to answer questions and give guidance. It is extremely rare to find someone who is so spiritually attuned and at the same time so astute in worldly matters, so conscious of an individual's mentality and psychology and mood and sincerity. <laughs> and I, I mean, he was so qualified. I remember, uh, you know, um, His Holiness Radhana Swami introduced this system of, of counselors at Chopadi and, and many yatras have uh, implemented the same system um, in other places. So maybe Nityananda Prabhu, but someone brought it up to Goswami Maharaj, whether they should try to implement something like that in, um, in Dallas. And Goswami Maharaj said, no. I want to control everything personally. And he was qualified to do so. Our God brother Bharadraj Prabhu told me how much Goswami Maharaj had helped him over the years. Um, Bharadraj is an artist and Srila Prabhupada had engaged him in artistic work. Uh, first in painting for the books and then in learning the art of doll making in Bengal. Later, Bharadraj came to lead the Fate Project, a museum in Los Angeles. He told me of an incident when he was very sick in Calcutta in, in, in the hospital. He was so sick and the situation seemed so hopeless 
that he had almost given up the will to live. Then Goswami Maharaj came and spent two hours with him in the hospital. Bharadraj Prabhu's real desire was to preach in Russia. At that time, no one had gone to Russia and Bharadraj was born in part of the USSR. Goswami Maharaj understood what was in his heart and encouraged him to go to Russia to preach how important it would be and how good it would be. And just by that talk with Goswami Maharaj, uh, Bharadraj Prabhu developed the will to live again. He felt he had something to live for and he got better. So now I'll relate an incident from when Goswami Maharaj himself was in the hospital in Bombay. Uh, once he needed an operation and he had gone to Jaslok Hospital, the best in Bombay at the time. But when Srila Prabhupada heard about it, he wanted to stop the operation, the, the surgery. So he got into our Jeep, the only vehicle we owned, and rode all the way to uh, central Bombay to the hospital. But when he got there, it was too late. So Swami Maharaj had just come out of the operation theater. And when he opened his eyes and saw Srila Prabhupada, he told him that he had just had a dream. Prabhupada had been giving a report to the previous acharyas about his work on the planet Earth. And he had said that people basically had no spiritual assets, no knowledge, no austerity, practically no good qualities at all. But in the dream, Prabhupada had said that they did have one qualification. Their one qualification is that they have faith in me and they do whatever I say. Then Goswami Maharaj looked up at Srila Prabhupada to see his response. And Srila Prabhupada agreed, yes, it is true. And um, <clears throat> that, uh, that reminds me of a little incident when, uh, when Tamal Krishna Goswami was staying with me here in uh, Carpentaria uh, at my ashram. And we, uh, yeah, we, we, we went for a walk at Butterfly Beach, which is, uh, <laughs> is a nice place to walk, favorite place. And he saw a dog in the ocean and the master was throwing a, uh, a, a, a fairly um, large stick. I mean, I wouldn't say a log, but it was, it was, you know, a substantial stick into the water. And the dog, <clears throat> you know, would brave the waves and go out and, and get that stick stick and bring it back to the master and place it at the master's feet. And then again, the, the master would throw that uh, wood into the ocean. And again, the dog would brave the waves and um, get that stick and bring it back to his master's feet. So Goswami Maharaj was commenting on how uh, you know, how, how, how faithful that dog was to its master and how, um, how brave it was, you know, to go out into the waves. It was quite, you know, quite a rough sea that day uh, and, and do the master's bidding. And that actually reminded me of Goswami Maharaj himself. You know, he would brave any situation to do what Srila Prabhupada wanted and then, 
now offer that service at his master's lotus feet. So coming back to the incident at Jeslok Hospital, um, actually <laughs> we do have no qualification except in Srila Prabhupada as spiritual master. And Goswami Maharaj was the epitome of such faithful and devoted service. In fact, he acted at, like an extension of Srila Prabhupada. And the way he took care of Srila Prabhupada at the end, the way he rendered such intimate service to him, sometimes it seemed like he could read Prabhupada's mind, which was a great asset for a personal servant. Of course, Goswami Maharaj was so perceptive, he could practically read anyone's mind. But coming back to his um, intimate service to Srila Prabhupada, someone put together a, uh, a sort uh, 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 like a collage of, of, of audio clips of Srila Prabhupada saying, call Tamal, where's Tamal? Call Tamal, call Tamal, call Tamal, call Tamal, call Tamal. Call Tamal. He, would, he, would, he would always call for Tamal Krishna Goswami to render some service or to discuss uh, some idea with him. After Srila Prabhupada left, Goswami Maharaj took complete charge of the ceremonies. He made the arrangements for Prabhupada to visit the deities of Vrindavan, the arrangements for Prabhupada to be placed in Samadhi, the arrangements for the festival, and the invitations to the Vaishnavas of Vrindavan, the senior Vaishnavas associated with the different temples and mats. And, you know, one thing that impressed me was how Goswami Maharaj took possession of some of Srila Prabhupada's personal effects and then gave them to individual devotees as Mahaprasad, as remnants of Prabhupada's to keep Prabhupada near to them as a remembrance to sustain them in separation. And Goswami Maharaj was so perceptive that he seemed empowered to give just the right item <coughs> to the specific individual. Um, well, there's so much I could say, but I, I, I think Let me see how much time we have. Uh, we have a little time. Okay, I'm going to, uh, to, to talk about a very um, significant talk I had with, um, with Goswami Maharaj in Calcutta, which um, really revolutionized the way I, I, I saw Krishna consciousness. Um, so it was in 1971 and it was quite late at night. All the other devotees had gone to take rest. And somehow uh, I ended up meeting Tamal Krishna Goswami on the balcony of the Calcutta temple. And um, he, he, he said something that in a way might seem obvious, but to me at the time, it was quite uh, profound. And he said that the, the secret of success in spiritual life is a, a serving and pleasing the spiritual master. 
Now, up until then, I was doing everything. I was attending the morning program. I was chanting my rounds. I was reading Srila Prabhupada's books. I was preaching. I was doing everything. But they were, but they were all just part of the program. But after this talk with Goswami Maharaj, everything had a focus. And the focus was, was Srila Prabhupada. And then all the other things were uh, taken up by me in the mood of service uh, to Srila Prabhupada. Um, yeah, once Goswami Maharaj told me that on the Radha Damodar buses, uh, his great friend, <laughs> Vishnu Jan Swami, he had a big photo of Srila Prabhupada's ear. I mean, you know, the side of Srila Prabhupada's face. And he would, he would chant his rounds to the photo of Srila Prabhupada's ear. Like he was chanting uh, to, to please Srila Prabhupada. So I guess coming back to our chronology Uh, yeah, well, one thing is that uh, whenever I think of the history of ISKCON or looking at pictures from the history of ISKCON, Goswami Maharaj was there practically everywhere. It's inconceivable how one person could have done so much to spread Krishna consciousness, to serve Lord Chaitanya and Srila Prabhupada. So in December of 1999, I had a major surgery in California. And a year later, Goswami Maharaj came to visit me here. He had planned to stay for five full days but then he said, I've come so close. I think I should visit my mother. And I said, you must. He said, then I'll have to leave early in the morning. On the last day, I won't be able to stay with you. I said, no, you must visit your mother. Now Goswami Maharaj had been presenting papers at the annual conference of the AAR the American Academy of Religion. And there he had noticed a professor, Barbara Holdridge. He had been struck and impressed by her and had developed the desire to meet her. At the same time, she had been observing him and hearing him deliver papers. And she had also been impressed and developed the desire to meet him. So on the last day of the conference, they were introduced to each other. He told her that he was going to be visiting Santa Barbara, where she is a scholar and professor of religious studies at the University of California. And she said, all right, when you come to Santa Barbara, please phone me and we'll get together. So he phoned her and arranged for her to come to my place for lunch. And he and I walked down the driveway, a long driveway, to wait for her. <laughs> she was late to arrive, but Goswami Maharaj said, well, we can walk up and down the driveway and get, get in a little walk. So we walked up and down the driveway and eventually she came. And yes, Goswami was quite regular with his walks, as was Srila Prabhupada. I remember once when we were together in Houston, we didn't have all that time, much time, maybe 20 minutes, but he said, we should take a walk. He said, walking, you know, watch, walking is such a thing that even if you um, can't get in a full hour or 45 minutes, even if you just walk for 20 minutes, 
uh, you you benefit. So we we, we yeah, I remember many walks with him. I remember uh, taking a, a, a walk with him in uh, Cambridge. Uh, and you know, he was dressed as a sadhu. And he, he, anyway, there's too much to say. I can't say everything. But uh, so anyway, so we were, <laughs> so we're walking up and down the driveway at my ashram waiting for Professor Holdridge. And he had uh, meticulously planned the whole meeting. He met her first without me. Then he brought her to the temple room where I was waiting and chanting. She sat down right in front of our deities, Sri Shigandarvika Giridhari, and we discussed Gaudiya Vaishnav Siddhanta. Then we all had lunch together and I thought, wow, when I was at college, we never had professors like her. <laughs> and I started to see that there was a whole new field in academia. Until then, I had not had any idea of what the field was like. My memory of the academy went back to 1969 when I graduated from Brandeis and joined Srila Prabhupada. But Goswami Maharaj had told me that people of our generation who are spiritually inclined either joined spiritual movements, like we did, or went into religious studies. Anyway, she was extraordinary. And of course, Goswami Maharaj was extraordinary. And the discussion between them was wonderful. It really gave me a glimpse into the field. I had heard a lot from Goswami Maharaj about his work in the academic community. But until I met her, I didn't really have a sense of what the field was actually like. And in the end, she stayed for several hours. And afterwards, I was completely enlivened. So I'm, t I'm, I'm, uh, but I'm, I'm telling the story about her sort of as like a, a grain of rice from the pot of people that Goswami Maharaj touched from all different backgrounds. After Barbara Holdridge left at around 10 that night, I suddenly remembered a letter that Srila Prabhupada had written to me when I first joined in 1969. Quote, I've received one letter from your father, Srila Prabhupada had written. It appears that you are a good scholar and have a taste for psychology and divinity studies. Of course, Krishna consciousness is on the line of divinity. If you make a thorough study of all theological schools and explain Krishna consciousness as the postgraduate presentation of all theological theses, it will be a great accomplishment. As I was reading the letter with Goswami Maharaj, I was thinking of Barbara Holdridge. She had studied all religions she had gone more deeply into Judaism and Hinduism, and her great work was called Veda and Torah. She said that after going through all the different literatures and all the different traditions, she had become particularly interested in Gaudiya Vaishnavism and planned to make Gaudiya, Vai Gaudiya traditions a focus of her research. And yeah, Goswami Maharaj really encouraged her in that direction. Um, so, you know, uh, for some time after Goswami Maharaj introduced me to her, uh, you know, she was working on a research project on holy places in India that featured Vraja. And um, she had kept in communication with Gos 
Swami Maharaj. So again, I mention her. Uh, she's like a grain from the pot because the combination of meeting her and seeing how Goswami Maharaj dealt with her and rereading the letter from Srila Prabhupada all convinced me of the importance of the work in the academic field. And Goswami Maharaj definitely emerged as the leader in the field. He showed that one could be a devotee and at the same time, an excellent scholar and author. He published so many articles and collections and established so many deep relationships with people in the academy. Once he sort of chided me, Nagiraj, what are you doing? I've already published so many books, what are you doing? But <laughs> since then, I've, I've also published some books. So when we received news that Go Swami Maharaj had left, Barbara Holdridge phoned me. She hadn't had much personal association with Go Swami Maharaj. The main times they were together were at my place for lunch and then again at the last AAR conference. But she was deeply moved when she heard of his passing. And she was also concerned about the project she was working on. And although she intimated that she wanted to discuss it with me, she felt reluctant because of my own state after hearing the news. But I got the idea that Goswami Maharaj would want me to discuss it with her. And knowing that I would be leaving for Dallas very shortly thereafter, I said, no, it's all right, we can discuss. And when we began, I felt that Goswami Maharaj was pleased. I felt some presence in the room, a brightness, and actually a blissfulness as we were talking. After the conversation around 11 that night, I went into the temple room and I really felt Goswami Maharaj's presence, just as if he were with me. And I felt he was indicating that not only was he currently with me, but now he could be with me always and intimately without being hampered by the trappings of having a body in the world and a role in society. <coughs> that was very encouraging. So I felt bright and blissful and wonderful. Although since then I have also felt separation. Another phone call, this was just after Goswami left. Another phone call came from one of Goswami Maharaj's disciples in Los Angeles, Balaram Prabhu from the Philippines. Balaram phoned and began asking about what had happened. And he was very controlled. Most of the people who phoned began very controlled. And then somewhere <laughs> between three seconds and three minutes later, they would break down and start to cry. Anyway, Balaram went on for one or two minutes and then said, I have to tell you about a dream I had the night before Srila Guru Dev left. And he began to sob uncontrollably. He wanted to tell me, but it was almost impossible for him to get it out because he was crying so much. He said that Srila Gurudev had come to him the night before, flanked by two devotees and saffron, and said, I have to leave now. In the dream, Balaram became a little angry and asked, why? Why do you have to leave? And Guru Dave replied, I just have to leave now. Then Balaram said that Guru Dave told him, I will always be with you. 
And then Balaram managed to get out the next few words, quote, with my God brothers, end quote. At first, I thought that Balaram meant that Srila Gurudev would always be with him and always be with his God brothers too. But Balaram indicated that Gurudev meant that he would always be with Balaram when Balaram was with Gurudev's God brothers, because Gurudev was always with his God brothers. So Balaram said he wanted to come and spend some time with me because I was, quote, the closest. And he also mentioned Giri Hari Swami. When I heard Balaram's dream, I thought there was definitely some plan. Then Barbara Holdridge phoned the next morning and said she couldn't sleep the whole night because she was thinking of Tamal Krishna Goswami and felt enlivened by his presence. So we can imagine how much effect Goswami Maharaj has had on people, both during his manifest presence and now. And at this point, um, of course, I, I could go on and on, but at, at this point, I want to speak about a phenomenon of devotees becoming attached to, to Mal Krishna Goswami who had never met him. Of course, one <laughs> famous example is our dear Madan Mohan Mohini Dasi. He never met Srila Gurudev, but became very, very uh, attached to him. He is very attached to him. And another one is a police officer in Mumbai named Nilesh Gopale. And, um, you know, Nilesh, uh, what to say? Anyway, so I asked Nilesh how he became so attached to Tamal Krishna Goswami, but by email, I asked him. And, and I thought it would be uh, maybe instructive to read his reply. So, quote, in 2012, I came across the videos of His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj named God's Demigods and Incarnations and God's Competitor. In his lecture, Maharaj very boldly and shastrically defeated Satya Sai Baba's follower. This was the first time I saw Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. I was stunned. As for the first time, I was seeing a devotee who could speak in this way. The way he cracked all theory and actually challenged the man with a bet. I was stunned. Later in 2014, a devotee gave me his hard disk in which I found his four lecture series about memories of Srila Prabhupada. Then I got the idea that this man was out of this world. After hearing his four lectures, I was fully convinced that I must go ahead and hear more from him. Out of curiosity, I searched for him on the web. I came to know about his death and I was suddenly crying. Eventually, 
I came to know about his ashram at Govardhan, his samadhi, his books, his relationship with Srila Prabhupada, and most important for me, tkgtm.com, his tape ministry. And in the in memory and in the in memoriam section, I heard all offerings of devotees when Maharaj left this world. After hearing his grace Radha Krishna Prabhu's offering, I searched him out on the web and somehow got his contact number. I reached him and he gave me the contact number and told me to uh, approach Agabit Prabhu. I built a relationship with Agabit and he was happy to help me. He guides me. And he told me that when I come to Mumbai, I should meet Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu. So in the Juhu temple, I met Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu. And after he heard me, he immediately took me to a photograph of you, Maharaj, that's me, and Srila Prabhupada. We took a selfie there. <laughs> uh, Agabit Prabhu had already told me about uh, the relationship between you and Srila Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. I visit both your quarters in the Prabhupada Tower. I felt very good. I am in contact with Madan Mohan Mohini Mataji. She gave me Maharaja's book, photographs, and one small piece of cloth he wore when he passed away. I regularly visit Iskhan Juhu when I get time. I have read all the books of His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj, including TKG's diary and the drama of Lord Jagannath. Maharaj, I feel very, very protected with him. He comes in my dreams, not always, but often. My wish is that I may serve you the devotees of ISKCON and make my life successful. Hare Krishna. So, uh, as I said, I could go on and on, but as we're uh, coming to the end of our time, I think we can uh, open, open the floor, <laughs> open the microphone to other devotees in case they want to share some recollections or reflections or, or ask uh, any questions. So. Maharaj, um, there was one question on the chat. Let's see if I can find that. It looks like it disappeared. Let's see. Uh, there was a question on the chat. She didn't say who, but they were asking you who, um, and perhaps you've touched on all of it in your, in your talk, but what was perhaps a favorite pastime with Jamal Krishna Maharaj and also how he, um, you felt he impacted the youth? That was the question. Um. Oh, I mean, shoot, every, every question just brings on a flood of memories. Uh, I remember, I mean, this may, might sound indirect, but I mean, I'm thinking of him in relation to the youth in Dallas, mm -hmm. because he extended himself so much to the youth in Dallas. But one thing he told his brother Kalachanji Das, uh, as he was walking down Gurley 
Avenue was, um, I know everything that's going on behind mm -hmm. every closed door in this community. <laughs> I know who's following the regulative principles and who's not. <laughs> they, they don't know I know, but, <laughs> but I know. And, and this reminds me of a dream that one of our devotees in this, in the area here, Kandarpa Manjuri, Devi Dasi, she's not Goswami Maharaj's disciple, but she had a dream. And in this dream, uh, Tamal Krishna Goswami was, was, you know, this was after he left, he was walking amongst some devotees maybe in Dallas, but there, uh, I don't even know where it was, but there was a large assembly of his uh, disciples. And some of them could see him and some could not. Mm -hmm. So in the dream, she asked him, why is it that some of your disciples can see you and others can't? And he replied, those who are following can wow. see me. And those who are not following mm -hmm. um, do not. Um, but yeah, he, you know, he started as, you know, coming back to the youth, he started his uh, Kirtan Sanghas, which, um, especially now the youth, they're really into those. Mm -hmm. and that, that was like a great contribution uh, he made with those kirtans. I remember, uh, I recall after those kirtans in Mayapur, His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami mentioned that this is the nice mood, this is the proper mood of kirtan in the temple. He, he, he reflected about these banging, booming, and he felt that this was the mood that we, we should imbibe in the temple, those kirtans. I remember him uh, saying, Maharaj. So, nice. um, so let, let me just see. I see a few other chats here. Um, this speaker is asking, can you kindly share your most memorable pastime with Tamal Krishnamaraj in Mumbai? Well, you, you know, I have so many, but right. before you came to the end of the sentence, yes, Bombay, I already thought of one from Vrindavan. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to go with that one. Beautiful. It's, it, and it's, um, yeah, it's really, it's memorable and, uh, and I'll explain why it made such an impression on me. It was during, um, it must have been Srila Prabhupada's last year in Vrindavan. And Srila Prabhupada wanted to uh, register a trust called the Bhaktivedanta Swami Charity Trust, which would give funds to help projects in uh, Godamandala Bhumi. You know, he mentioned like his God, Prabhupada's God brother, Sridhar Maharaj, he was, he was having trouble finishing the Nath Mandir. Mm -hmm. And so Prabhupada was saying that funds could go to help his God brothers. And some could go to like um, renovate uh, historical places related to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's leelas. So he sent, so Prabhupada sent me to Mathura to register the trust. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a long day. And, you know, by the time I got back, I was really tired. So I just dropped off the document with Tamal Krishna Goswami, who was Prabhupada's secretary. And then I went to my room in the guest house, small room in the guest house to take rest. And suddenly, maybe 10, 
10 minutes later, I was just about to retire for the night. I heard loud banging on the door. <laughs> and I knew it could be only one person. <laughs> so I opened the door and there he was. <laughs> and his first words, I'll never forget, his first words were, boy, you really blew it. <laughs> And, and, and he said, you know, you registered Bhaktivedanta Charity Trust. There could be so many Bhaktivedanta Charity Trust, but this is Bhaktivedanta Swami Charity Trust. There's only one Bhaktivedanta Swami. So, you know, you really blew it and you have to go and redo it tomorrow. <laughs> Now, the reason I felt so exhilarated by this is because Goswami Maharaj and I were really close friends. Uh, but why I felt so in gladdened is because, for, you know, for the sake of maintaining cordial relations in terms of our friendship, he didn't hold back you know, when it came to Prabhupada's service. Mm -hmm. And that really made me happy that, you know, that, that, that the central point was really Srila Prabhupada's service. Yeah. And, you know, he wouldn't compromise when it came to, to Prabhupada's service. And, and so you had to go back. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I had to redo it. <laughs> And it was, yeah. it, it was very time consuming, I can imagine, in those days in India. Yeah, it was. Yes. <laughs> and it was hot. There were a lot of flies and mosquitoes. But, <laughs> you know, we had to do it right. Yes. Let me see. I think I have another question here. Um, okay, I would like to know, uh, this is from... Um, Joe Dinifer, which is Yudhisthira Prabhu, he said, I would like to know how Giriraj Mar Swami feels Srila Prabhupada's presence every minute standing next to him. How does he perceive this? Oh, well, that's a good question. But I wanted to say some more about the other one first. Mm -hmm. uh, favorite experiences. But this will indirectly address Yudhisthira Prabhu's question as well. So this was, uh, again, towards the end, but in Juhu. And Srila Prabhupada was, was, was quite ill. And basically, he wasn't coming out of his, his quarters. And Tamal Krishna Goswami was his secretary, and he was, he was upstairs. And the whole mood was not to disturb Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada was inside his area. Then there was a pair of doors. Then there was a, a, a room we sort of call the library room. And that there's a set of doors there that they, they were closed. And then there was the outer room, which was where Tamal Krishna Goswami sat at his desk. So I came up and yeah, you know, I was very happy to, to see my dear God brother and we didn't want to disturb Srila Prabhupada. So we went uh, to the far end of that front room, just to the door uh, that, that was the entry to, the, to Prabhupada's quarters. We didn't want to go outside the door because if Prabhupada needed something, we wanted to be able to hear him. And we were speaking in very hushed tones so as not to disturb Srila Prabhupada. So Tamal Krishna Goswami said, um, I want you to go to the bank and make a deposit. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm the temple president. <laughs> there are so many people who can make a bank deposit. You know, why do you have to ask me to make the bank deposit? 
you just had this little exchange. And then suddenly Prabhupada's buzzer rang. Mm -hmm. So we were very happy because we even he didn't get to see Prabhupada that much and much less so me. So we were very happy. So we ran around the outside into Prabhupada's quarters. And I mean, Prabhupada said several things, but in the course of it, he said, if the spiritual master asks you to go to the bank and you refuse, where is the surrender? <laughs> so I thought, oh my God. <laughs> I thought he must be reading my mind, you know, because I thought it was, be, would have been impossible for him to have heard us. Although my god brother Tejas Das, he did say that Prabhupada had very acute senses. And it is possible, but I didn't think it could possibly have been uh, that Prabhupada really heard us. So I thought like something, some mystic power, <laughs> Paramatma. So he said, you know, if the spiritual master tells you to go to the bank and you refuse, where is the surrender? Wow. And so what I got from that was that I shouldn't see Goswami Maharaj just as Goswami Maharaj, you know, as my older beloved God brother, but also see him as a representative of Srila Prabhupada and consider that what he, what he is telling me uh, could very well be taken as 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 uh, coming from Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. So that was a very very uh, uh, memorable. That's very beautiful. Um, one uh, one question from Rohini uh, Nitai Das, Rohini Sutta Nitai Das, uh, Hari Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, dear Maharaj. I would like to know how to always feel Tamal Krishnamara's presence with us. Hmm. Another, another question is, Maharaj, how can we get advancement in our spiritual life with the mood we have of pain uh, and the pain of, uh, with, of pain with Tamal Krishnamara? Hmm. Hmm. Well, <laughs> You know, the general answer is uh, that we feel the departed spiritual master's association or the departed Vaishnava's association by following his instructions. As Srila Prabhupada wrote in his um, dedication to his Srimad Bhagavatam, you know, dedicated to my spiritual master no, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Maharaj. He lives forever by his divine instructions and the follower lives with him. So this is something that we all have to deal with sooner or later. And the answer is uh, uh, to follow the instructions. And Srila Prabhupada also said of his spiritual master that he, he always feels that his spiritual master is with him, you know, by his side or lo looking over his shoulder. So, and after, after Srila Prabhupada left, uh, I came across this section in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 28 which elaborately discusses the departure of the spiritual master. I wasn't really conscious of that section, but it just, after Prabhupada left, it just opened up to me, so to speak. And I realized every question that I had about how to deal uh, in Srila Prabhupada's absence uh, uh, was answered. I was very excited after I discovered it, I went to Tamal Krishna Goswami and shared it with him. And I think that that's 
something that we all should read. And, um, you know, it, it comes in the, it's a, a story of King Puranjan. But anyway, to, to, to come to the point that the king and his wife went into the forest as Vanaprastas. And at a certain stage, the king left his body. And the, the wife was weeping piteously. And Srila Prabhupada says that when the spiritual master leaves, the disciples should weep, just like the widow wept for her husband when he left. And then, yeah, there's several very instructive verses and, and purports. And, uh, you know, Srila Prabhupada says that, um, so the wife, the wife was ready to enter the funeral pyre, fire of, of her husband. And Srila Prabhupada says that this indicates that the disciple should rather give up his life than fail to execute the mission of the spiritual master. And, and, he, and, and, and he said, or in other words, one should, be, one should be prepared to give his life uh, without any consideration of personal gain or loss for the service of the spiritual master. And then after that, uh, a, a Brahmin appears uh, to, to guide that widow in the absence of her husband. And again, figuratively, the widow is the disciple and the husband was the spiritual master. And it's the same idea that when one is ready to give one's life to the service of the spiritual master without any personal consideration, then a guidance will come. And in my case, uh, I can remember, I mean, this seems sort of, because it's very subjective, it sounds sort of sahajiya, but anyway. But I actually remember the moment that I felt Prabhupada's presence very uh, dramatically and palpably and vividly after he left. Uh, I was in Pakistan. <laughs> I would preach in pa I was in Pakistan on the roof of a nice house that belonged to a, a Muslim friend. He was such a nice person and so helpful. His name was Salim. You know, he was more helpful, I would say, than practically all of our life members in Bombay. So I was on the on the terrace of his of his home in Clifton, in um, in Karachi, and I don't know. Suddenly, I felt Prabhupada's presence, wow. and in such a way that he, um, like, I could I could get dictation from him. You know, like I, I could receive instruction from him. So that was his mercy. <laughs> but yeah, I'm always praying to him, and not just to him, you know, to the whole parampara. And I have uh, I have my picture of Tamal Krishna Goswami on my desk. I'm always looking at his picture and praying to him also. So yeah. Maharaj, if, if I may humbly add one thing for um, Nitai. Prabhu, um, Srila Gurudev always, in those days, they were cassettes, of course, and he would always listen to a cassette of Srila Prabhupada every morning, and then he would give his class based on that cassette. And I was up there often. And um, so I remember in the early days when I was living right in the temple, I was all, I'd be cleaning my house with my bandana on and I'd be listening to cassette tapes of my spiritual master. And to this day, every morning, my husband and I listen to a lecture of Srila Gurudev. 
And um, so that keeps him ever present in our lives, uh, ever present. So I would recommend that to anyone. Mm. And um, and I I um, listen to when I chant Japa in front of Giri Raj and my Gornitai deities. I I play uh, Shulagev Japa um, very softly. And when I'm not playing Gurudev's Japa, I'm watching you, Maharaj, on Facebook, and I chant with you often. Hi, <laughs> Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I may just interject one quick thing about uh, Agabit Prabhu. Yeah. He, he came to our home, and um, in our temple room, I have this pillow, and this pillow says, to teach is to touch a life forever. And I keep it at by Gurudev's lotus feet in my in my temple room. And when Agabit Prabhu came, he he said, "Oh my, you have that pillow. Everyone knows about this pillow." And so so I gifted this for his Vyasa Puja, and he used to keep it his feet on this pillow in in England under his feet. And he said he would embrace his pillow. And how I got this pillow back, because you know how the spiritual master gives prasadam. So there was a disciple, um, maybe Dhanadar Maharaj's disciple, that was very attached to Gurudev. He gave him this pillow. Oh. And, and when Gurudev left, Maturanath Prabhu found out where this pillow was, Maharaj. And he said, Nandini needs this pillow. And I'll, I'll even give you a pair of socks of Gurudev's with holes in them if you'll send me that pillow. And when I came for the first ceremony after, Shula Gurudev, after our beloved Gurudev left, Maturna and Leela gave me this in a beautiful little gift bag and said, this is for you, Nandini. So, you know, it was just very beautiful that Agabib came here. And um, I just wanted to share that, Marish. Yeah, I yeah. Beautiful. Oh, touching. Touching. Yeah. Hare Krishna. So um, I, I, I don't believe there are any questions. Let's see. Oh, this is again from Yudhisthira Prabhu. I heard that uh, he was asking about your perception now of Srila Prabhupada in your life. I believe that was what he was asking. Well, it's the same thing. Um, yeah. following the instructions. I mean, quite early on, Srila Prabhupada told me that I should take up writing as my first business. But then, you know, <laughs> being the temple president and Jew, I had so much to do, and then traveling as a sannyasi and GBC, so, uh, yeah, I would write articles for Back to Godhead, but uh, I wasn't doing that much writing. But then when I had my heart condition, um, you know, I had to change my lifestyle. I had to stop traveling like I was. And then I settled here in uh, Santa Barbara. And then I, 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 I uh, took up the writing. And um, so that book, uh, what to say, I'll Build You a Temple, The Jew Who's Story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's at, uh, it's with the printer and yeah, should be ready in about two months or at most three. And um, so when Srila Prabhupada completed the Chaitanya Charitamrita in Juhu, actually. And he wrote his concluding words, which are really beautiful, the glorification of his spiritual master. And he said, uh, you know, that certainly it would have been an occasion of great uh, jubilation for his Guru Maharaj to see that this book had been uh, translated. And so um, 
yeah, I, I, I yeah, I think <laughs> Prabhupada will be pleased that this book on Juhu, which he's directly requested be written. Um, but I don't know, I'm just, uh, I guess one other little incident, not, not directly related, but so I was in Dallas. This is after Goswami had left. And I was thinking that, you know, I'm very slow, you know, I'm very slow. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah, I have a lot to do before I leave and I'm very slow. So I, I need time. So I was just having that thought. And it was it was just leading up to Srila Guru Dave's um, uh, d d disappearance day. And so in so in 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 the mood of Srila Guru Dave's disappearance day, there was a reading going on in the temple room of TKG memories these little books, TKG Memories, that Sarva Boma Prabhu was involved in publishing. There may be others, but I know he was involved. Mm -hmm. So I came down to the temple room and a devotee was reading the book and came to a section, the, the heading of the section was something like uh, conveyor of good news. And the idea was that whenever Jamal Krishna Goswami got good news from Srila Prabhupada, he would share it with the devotees. So under this heading, uh, Jamal Krishna Goswami tells the devotees, you know, Prabhus, I have good news for you. I, I was just with Srila Prabhupada and Prabhupada said that Krishna wants us to all go back home, back to Godhead in this very lifetime. Mm -hmm. And if we're not ready, Krishna will extend the duration of our life beyond what it was meant to be so that we have enough time to, to finish what we have to do in order to go back to Godhead at the end of this lifetime. So I thought, wow, that's wow. that was that's exactly what I was thinking. I need more time. <laughs> and I got that good news from Sheila Guru Dave. So Maharaj, thank you so much for your time here. I, we are all so blessed to hear all of these intimate and beautiful pastimes that you share with Guru Dave. And I see that picture behind you. Um, and I remember showing you that picture that I carry in my wallet. And I asked you, wow, where was this picture taken? And you told me in Biomatsuris Cave. Yeah, in Kamivan. Yes, Biomatsuris Cave. Yeah. It's yeah. very uh, Sakuras photo. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I have I have two copies of it. I made a second copy and so one is on my altar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The seeing... picture on my altar uh, is of you and Shula Gurudev carrying the deities. Um I think it was the bathing ceremony in Vrindavan and you're a little in front and I think Gurudev made a comment about that 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 was appropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> In fact, Gurudev gave copies of that photo away. He liked it so much. Yes, that's, and, I got yeah. it. <laughs> so the background is, like, he was always a little ahead of me. You know, whatever it was, he was always a little ahead of me. Even, even like, when I had my heart condition, he had his prostate condition first. <laughs> so it's like he was always a little ahead of me no matter what it was. But this, the, this occasion uh, was, was um, Radhastami in Vrindavan. And in our sort of mood of Vraja Bhakti, mm -hmm. we like the idea that Krishna is chasing after Radharani, not that Radharani should be chasing after Krishna. 
So uh -huh. in that photo, I was holding Radharani and he was holding Krishna and I was a little ahead. Oh, so God. that was like, <laughs> although he was usually ahead of me in everything, but in this case, I was a little ahead of him. Oh, that's God. how he wanted it because he wanted Krishna to be chasing oh, that's Radharani. So sweet. Very beautiful, Marsh. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> so beautiful. Yes, he gifted me that picture. And I, I'm sure many, many yeah. people in the community have that beautiful picture. It's on my altar. I offer pictures, flowers every day to that picture. Oh, beautiful. So, yeah, so I've been, um, <laughs> you know, I just, I wanted to just read one quick thing, Maharaj, and this is, actually from His Holiness Indra Swami, But I just wanted to read it because it was, it was this part of the Vyasa Puja offering to you. And, um, and so he, I just edited this one part, but he says, my dear Maharaj, I will state it publicly and unequivocally here. Let the whole world know now and forever that you are the number one advanced devotee in my life and whose footsteps I follow. I have 100% confidence in your faith in Srila Prabhupada and his trust in you. That's all I require. If for whatever reason they stop me at the pearly gates of the spiritual world and stare, stare at me in disbelief as if to say, what are you doing here? I'll smile and reply, I'm just following in the footsteps of my good friend, Giriraj Swami, who passed this way not too long ago. No doubt they'll check our, their records and say, oh yes, he put in a good word for you. You're welcome. <laughs> Krishna Maharaj, all glories to you, Giriraj Swami, all glories. <laughs> so that's so glorious, really. And um, we thank you so much for your kind words and your memories. So beautiful, really. Thank you, Maharaj. And I believe we're, we're to introduce Nirmala, who is going to do a kirtan. And I just received a little bio on her. She's a disciple of Shivaram Swami. Right now, my husband and I are reading the Damodar Leela book, oh. um, which is so amazing. Oh, my goodness. And so... Um, She's a pioneer in the early days of Pandava Sena, and she has two wonderful Krishna conscious children. And Srila Gurudev saw her Bhat Yatam dance and said to Shivaram Swami, she is amazing. So she's supposed to lead a kirtan now. Nilamani, are you with us? It looks like she is. Hi, Krishna. Thank you so uh, much. And unmute myself. Thank you so oh, much. Beautiful. Such a wonderful I had to go get these to check the time. So I'm just going to
Jai Nilamada. Thank you so much for your devotion. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So I once attended um, that temple in, in um, England and it was um, Ramachandra's appearance day and it was glorious. Glorious. So I just uh, would like to make a little final announcement. Thank you so much for your beautiful offering and kirtan. This has been the most enlivening first day program ever. And um, completely, I'm completely intoxicated. Um, I just did want to make a, a little uh, announcement about tomorrow's. This is day one, which has been ecstatic. Thank you for all your participation. So many devotees from all over the world. Um, tomorrow, Saturday, is session two. And um, the speakers are um, His Holiness Jaya Pataka Maharaj's first. And then we'll have memories from the devotees in Houston. And then Her Grace um, Vishaka Mataji, she will be speaking. Also Her Grace Malati Prabhu. And then His Grace Gurudas Prabhu, uh, His Holiness Ritapacha Swami and Dallas Memories. So we have a uh, quite a lineup of exalted souls tomorrow now we have the india time we have the and this is all on um uh you can find this on tkg nectar on facebook um and it's it's an early morning in dallas because um it's an hour early uh so it starts um uh dallas time i believe uh at mm, let's see uh, it also says, I'm sorry on Saturday that we're going to, we will have uh, His Grace Ek Eka Chakra Prabhu and Her Grace Janaba Mataji will be speaking, I think, prior, earlier in the morning. And His Holiness Bhakti Gurve Narayan Swami, as well as His Holiness Keshva Bharti Dasko Swami. And they are, um, I believe, at 4 a.m. Dallas time is when they speak um, and they will be speaking uh, kind of four till 5.30, I believe, Dallas time. And then the second session will be starting at 10 a.m. Dallas time and it will go all the way till maybe like um, 1.30, two o'clock in the afternoon. So um, please everyone attend. I believe that um, maybe Jai Sri Radhe uh, who is, uh, took second initiation from Giriraj Swami. <laughs> she has been a major coordinator of this event, all glories to her service. So this will be uh, tomorrow's event. And we, again, Maharaj, thank you so much for your, that smile. <laughs> and that laugh is also contagious. <laughs> Hare Krishna, thank you very much. We are we're going to sign off for now and hope to see everyone tomorrow. Hare Krishna.